So uh, let me, I'm going to invite uh, Kent back up here but in, in a moment, but let me just go straight to the router and um, I want to highlight a couple things. First of all, I was answering your question um, about how do, I, how do you know that the uh, internet connection went down. Uh, one of the reasons you know is that I'm, that router that it was feeding is the, uh, is the Enterprise Cloud Manager. So all my internet access today is actually through this router right here. And this is the ethernet cable that I cut. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go into that router and, uh, and show you kind of some of the features. But one of the things I would say is my laptop is, um, I have Zscaler running on that laptop. And I want to show you uh, a little bit about how the Zscaler works. So, but first, if you go to, um, if you go and try to go to dodgers.mlb.com on my router, Zscaler blocks that. And that's because in my house, nobody is allowed to go to the Dodgers website. It's the same thing, and this is because uh, Dodgers eliminated the Giants last night. But I want to go under the hood now uh, into that router uh, and look at where I set that up. So this is the dashboard for the Cradle Point router. And again, this is optimized for VGA right now because of the projector that we're using. Uh, so I'm a little cramped for space, but I'll. Uh, what I would do is the connection manager is what I was looking at, uh, show me which WANs are running. And in this case, I can see that my uh, 4G modem is, is uh, still green. The Ethernet WAN, which I was using in load balancing, is red because that, that cable was cut. Uh, if I go to status, um, actually, let me go straight to networking or security. So with Zscaler, it's in our content filtering. What I would do is I would go to cloud-based filtering. And you can see the, uh, the Zscaler menu item right here. The way I've set this up, and they have a, a few different ways you can do it. Uh, one is through uh, DynDNS or uh, some sort of TLS tunnel. But the one that I use is the TLS tunnel. And the reason I do that is I use DynDNS on a lot of my routers so that I can uh, use that in my VPN tunnels, et cetera. It makes it a little bit easier to, uh, to, to set up without having to hard code the IP addresses in. The way the TLS tunnel works is, in, in, and because we're 4G, we are sensitive to how much traffic is going over the air because it is a paper bet model. So we, the integration we've done with Zscaler is when a request is made to go to a website, we pass that request up through the TLS tunnel to the Zscaler cloud. And there are three answers. Either, yes, that's a safe site, let it pass. And so in that case, we can pass it straight to that location, maybe at Salesforce, without having it go through the Zscaler cloud. If the answer is no, that's a recognized threat. Let's say I'm a red box kiosk and it's trying to contract some server in Ukraine. No. <laughs> and that's where the, you know, I think Zscaler, that's where the real advantages come in with them is it's not just blocking access to certain types of content, but it's all the malware, the, the dark sites that they track and that they automatically put in there. And then if it's unsure, then they'll pass it up through the Zscaler cloud and you can keep an eye on it. And in this case, uh, if I go to the Zscaler page, um, which I have open, uh, I can see that this is the 1600 that I have. I call it the 16. This is the Cradle Point router that I'm going through. And I can see that uh, uh, just since I plugged it in uh, right before this session that I've had 39, uh, I've had one blocked. Excuse me, I need to refresh that. All right, it's going to want me to log in again. And then, Kent, I'll, I'll have you come up on the Gmail one as well. This would be a good time to uh, show you that example as well. I timed out on the Zscaler site. So now if I go to the router that I've been using, um, that's Zscaler. Uh, that you can see that I've had uh, 526 allowed. Three blocked. Uh, two of them were Dodgers. One of them is New York Yankees. And then you can see the, the categories that they have. And I might zoom up on that. 
uh, this, this, uh, I'm fighting the resolution on this, on the Z scaler. But anyway, it gives you the ability to look at what are the categories that you're looking at. So in my house, for example, I can see uh, how much traffic is on Netflix. I can, I can actually see uh, the TiVo requests on my TiVo. Uh, to go to the TiVo servers and get those ads that they put in there. You know, the ads that say you should really watch the next version of Twilight or something like that. Um, and it gives you the granularity to, uh, you know, to do some detailed filtering on that. Um, Kent, I'll ask you to come up. And one of the things that uh, Kent did is, you know, part of his role is just security awareness within our company. And so Pacific Source Benefits is the... Uh, healthcare provider that that Cradle Point employees use, and so this is one of the uh, uh, this is a, a phishing email that Kent created, and uh, I'll let him take it from there. Yeah, so uh, part of what we had to do was you know to understand your own security, it's a good idea to fish yourself. Uh, hopefully, you guys are all real familiar with that. So basically, what I did was I took our healthcare provider and uh, created kind of a bogus Gmail account, and. Pretty much just tried to, you know, again, phishing is one of those things where you want that sense of urgency so people will do it when they're not thinking maybe so much. And uh, when you look at your health care benefits about to expire, uh, this is final notice, must happen today. today. And when you click on the link, um, Zscaler comes in and, and does what it's supposed to do, which is to, to block those based on uh, <clears throat> reputation or known uh, URLs, etc. So... Nice try, Ken. <laughs> Custom <laughs> messaging. Uh, so that's that's kind of the. Do you want me to go ahead and go? Yeah, into the, go okay. right into it. So the other the other thing I was uh, was was doing is uh, setting up for kind of the whole IoT slash M to M hacking world. What's going on there? And so if we can successfully manage this, we'll be in good shape. Wow, worked. Let's see if we can do that. So, uh, you guys are all familiar with Shodan, pretty much. Hmm. So it basically does banner grabs of open ports on the internet. Yep. So it's the first tool that that is going to be used for for hackers to get into what's out there and what services are available. This was kind of interesting. So I just did a, a a quick search on transit. So it goes through the banner grabs, looks for uh, transit, and. Uh, just kind of scrolling through here. This one's kind of interesting. Um, in tank inventory. I don't know if you can see that okay. Diesel volume. So these are, these are, in this case, it's some form of laid law transport, transit. Uh, some kind of diesel tanker and giving you the temperature. So this is some kind of sensor slash IOT that's out there on the open internet. Um, a lot of times, if if you get to trans, you know we get to transit authority. The other thing it tells you is when you click through, um, it actually gives you what open ports are, as well as the location of the device if they can get it. So this is a way of targeting specific uh, devices, or if you're looking for a specific company, sometimes the banner grabs will be there. If we were to look at some of the M to M competitors here. Uh, one of the things that we do from a security perspective is the way we set up our default logins is a little different. So the password itself is seeded off the MAC address. And so as opposed to a, you know, Cisco Cisco being the default login, <laughs> it actually has a little bit more meaning behind it. Another interesting thing we would do is, is that you could, we could look for SSH ports and all that. I'm not going to go into all that detail. Um, what we could also do when we do SSH on our devices, it's kind of interesting. Um, I was going to run in crack, but it's going to take too long, so I'm going to kind of pose that. You guys know what in crack is, so you can do RDP, SSH, all those kind of attacks. If you run in crack against a cradle point def default device, um, it actually, when it goes through the third time that the uh, the SSH session is initiated, so you get, you know, three bad passwords three times. So the ninth actual attempt, we actually send you this interesting message that says bye. And uh, we shut down, we shut off that uh, IP address from access to the device. So a lot of little things that we do because we've been out there on the open internet uh, in, in a lot of ways. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you while I have this laptop on here is uh, kind of in the news a lot, you know, after the uh, 
the, uh, the, the recent Jeep Cherokee wired Charlie Miller, if you guys were paying attention to that uh, at Black Hat. This is actually from uh, Craig Smith. This is a uh, CAN bus simulator. So part of our work in uh, transportation includes the fact that, that we have to look at the kind of requirements that are there. So did a, did a quick uh, demo here of CAN bus simulator. You can see it's uh, kind of idling there with the, the speed. These are all um, the different IDs that the CAN bus sends out there. If you're not familiar with CAN bus, it, it basically is a broadcast technology. It's unencrypted and it's, it's pretty easy to inject to as well. And so I've got a CAN sniffer sniffing this simulator over here. And the way you reverse, everybody's like, wow, you know, they hacked the Jeep. It's so cool. They did it so fast. It just took a minute. Well, not really, because this is the kind of work you have to do to reverse engineer it, which is, in this case, if I accelerate, uh, you, you kind of keep an eye on the IDs over there to see which one is uh, in increasing on a linear basis. And so you guys tell which one it was? Not really. No. It's kind of hard to see. <laughs> but if, if you look, you can see one of them is actually going up. If you look at 244 here, you can actually see that it will go up incrementally there. And so now you know that that CAN bus ID 244 is actually the uh, speedometer, potentially acceleration, depending on, on how it's organized. And uh, same kind of thing with the uh, turn signals. So you can turn the turn signals on, and in this case you can see, uh, I think it's 18E there, or 188, sorry, 188. So the idea there is just to take a look at, okay, if that's the CAN bus and I'm giving internet access to my buses, um, what do we have to do to make sure they're secure? And I'll flip back to this. I hope that's the right one. Yep. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, kind of keep that in the back of your mind, I guess. When we look at uh, typical customers, they've come in with uh, failover for, uh, with, with Cradle Point. And what we found out was when they started looking at this in detail, they're using what we, we term the monolithic network. So this is your basic uh, segmented logical network that you see in all kinds of stores. And uh, in this case, we provide that kind of segmentation to just like every other vendor. Um, but w what we've also found is that for some reason, if, like if you look at the hacks that were big news over the last year, two years, three years, almost every one of them had a component of segmentation errors. I mean, nobody talks about it. I mean, it got a little bit of press last week with Brian Krebs talking about the flat network at Target. But the bottom line is, when you start to look at what's going on in these networks, it's once I gain access, how am I, how am I able to get to the payment system? How am I able to get across all those, quote, VLANs? And uh, I'm going to blow through these pretty quick, actually, because we we're kind of low on time, I think. Um, so almost all of them start with phishing attacks. There's a lot of great fish, phishing tools out there that uh, we kind of keep track of just because it's kind of fun. And I'm gonna, Another one that's happening quite a bit right now is wire transfer attacks. Um, this is an actual one that we got hit with. So <coughs> the interesting is the date on this, April 15th. We announced publicly our 45 million in funding on April 14th. <laughs> on April 15th, cradlepoint.co was registered and we got this email spoofing our CEO to our CFO. And this is happening all the time, nonstop. So uh, just kind of interesting. Yeah, you, uh, you guys, Ubiquity, that happened to Ubiquity. Big time. Did you guys see how many, it was? It's 250 million or something, something like that. Million. It, was it was enormous. Number. It was enormous. It was yeah. the exact same thing you just showed off. Yeah, and so those are real attacks. Obviously, phishing is, you know, the number one sport for hackers right now. It's just, there's, it's so easy to do. <laughs> there's so many ways to, to accomplish it. And the fact is, is that if you start thinking about it, <coughs> all these comments about in this case, it was Target specifically, but it's all about segmentation, walling off, isolating systems, uh, systems that are linked that shouldn't be. Uh, the last one's classic. There shouldn't have been a route between a network on an outside contractor and one for payment data. <laughs> Rock on, dude. That is so cool. But why is it so hard? 
And the real reason it's so hard is because the way we've been doing network management for the last X number of years, pick your, day, pick your date, um, you know, a flat text file that we configure either through templates or other techniques, and it goes on and on and on. And then you take that and you try and apply it to one store or perhaps 100 stores or 1,000 or 10,000. And so segmentation becomes a very difficult management problem in a lot of ways. Same concept when you talk about buses. So kind of flip back to the CAN bus exercise. When you think about this, the fact that on that bus you've got passenger Wi-Fi, but you also have credit card processing, you also have potentially digital signage, uh, cameras for security, um, and we're not seeing this yet, but uh, the fact is, is that same concept of a parallel network or an application-specific isolated network makes a lot of sense. You can do the same thing logically, but it still does make a lot of sense. Um, other areas, so we got the, the Jeep there for, uh, for references. Um, every, everybody remembers the, uh, the recent, did anybody go to RSA, you know, in the news? RSA, uh, I forget the guy, Chris Roberts, I think, was uh, telling the world via Twitter that, that he could fly the airplane indirectly. Um, this diagram is from the FAA's guidebook, and I don't know if you can see it clear or not, but You've got basically the infotainment center, which is all the fun internet stuff that you can do on the, in the back of the plane. And then you've got avionics in the front end. But be secure because there's a firewall between them. So <laughs> you don't worry about anything because there's a firewall there. We all know that's 100% that's effective. But the problem is, is that um, when you look at that, it's like that's the norm by the FAA. That's the, the way they're building and designing systems. So you're putting all that security on a manufacturer that maybe doesn't have security as his expertise. Um, this was a great Wi-Fi attack. Uh, this is in, uh, I forget, the uh, Silicon Valley of China, basically. This was the St. Regis Hotel. It was all spanking, internet wired, iPads in your rooms. I don't know if you guys heard about this. And it was just fabulous, you know, as far as all the connectivity that you could have. Well except for one minor detail, which was that the guest Wi-Fi network was also connected to the automation networks. So one guy that figured out how to do that would like start flashing the lights off at 4 a.m. and start doing all kinds of fun stuff with people's drapes and turning TVs and, <laughs> and audio on. So that was, a, that was a pretty fun one there that, again, that, that whole segmentation problem, right? Um, when you get to IoT, for me, it's really hard to describe what it is. I guess we've been doing it for a long time at, at and this is a cartoonist buddy of mine out of Austin, Texas. Um, and I think it's for IoT, it's not the fact that you can describe what it is, but you can kind of tell what category it goes into, right? And for us, that's primarily true with the categories that, that Ken had talked about. So check out Sam Hurt advertisement for him. Other IoT hacks, I'm gonna kind of move along a little bit quicker. You guys probably are all familiar with the Nest problems and the, and the, the Belkin uh, plug-in problems. Some of the security systems as far as um, home security. And when you look at all these attacks, they have one thing in common, which is typically the attack vector for a lot of this stuff in IoT is actually the management interface, right? So they put a consumer grade um, uh, web server that basically has all kinds of problems and that's how they get into a lot of these uh, devices. Um, when I did the Shodan exercise, I, I, I don't think I said, I'm, I live in Dallas and um, one of our customers is, uh, has to do with the traffic systems in Dallas and uh, when I first started doing some Shodan searches I had to look for Dallas and I found some of their traffic systems online that were exposed. And uh, it turned out, so we notified them. So one of the things that, as a you know, security guy, you're supposed to do that kind of uh, outwardly uh, uh, tell people. So we told them about it. They actually knew about it. And they, it, believe it or not, it was a problem that their vendor had authenticating their devices. And it was they, they had to wait for an upgrade in order to actually roll out and protect their, the, the traffic systems. Because it was unauthenticated, you'd go in and change the lights, make turn, you know, turn them all blinky and red. And it was crazy because they knew about it, but they, there was zero they could do about it, nothing, nothing they could do to fix it. So again, the concept comes up of what we're trying to do here is that same separating those, those, those networks, putting your non-core stuff 
off of uh, off of the core network. And you know, in in a Walmart, you do have that many 4G e, 4G uh, LTE connections. Uh, a lot of companies, you have to really pick and choose your battles because you're not going to be able to afford to have routers all over the place. But a lot simpler in a lot of ways than trying to manage segmentation problems um, and, and other issues along those lines. Um, one, people ask me a lot about what do I do for IoT security. OWASP is doing a great job. So if you guys are uh, into learning more about IoT, I always point people to OWASP. They've got a great guide for both authentication as well as uh, uh, overall protection of IoT devices. And uh, you've already seen my demos. Kudos to Craig for building that simulator. And I think that's it. <laughs>